the President of the Assembly of State Parties and President of the Court, Excellencies, Ambassadors, Judges, outgoing and incoming prosecutors of the International Criminal Court, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, representatives of non-governmental organizations, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the delegation of the Republic of the Gambia, I'm deeply honored to address this important meeting to celebrate Mrs. Fatu Bensuda's distinguished career, indelible legacy and dedicated service as prosecutor of our International Criminal Court. It has been a remarkable journey. First as deputy prosecutor from 2004 to 2012 and as prosecutor from 2012 to 2021. By the grace of God and a dint of luck, I was the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs when Mrs. Ben Suda was elected as prosecutor in New York nine years ago. It was a proud moment for the Gambia, as it is today to not only witness the ascendance of one of her illustrious daughters to the high office of prosecutor, but also the first African female elected through consensus by all state parties. The Herculean task and prosecutorial initiatives that have been since been undertaken in that capacity are much more gratifying today. And I fully remember when the then prosecutor, Ocampo, was saying, you will see Fatu is an iron lady, an iron fist in a velvet glove. And we told her then, we were convinced, and we knew that she will do her best, she will live up to expectation. And we knew that he will, she will not be able, as Cervantes will say, limpiar la tierra de todas las malas cosas, wipe out evil from the surface of the earth. But we must all recognize that she has done her best. Madam President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. In today's factious geopolitical political environment that the court persistently navigates, it is evident that the work of the prosecutor of the ICC is full with daunting challenges and enormous risk as it pursues impartial justice. Over the last two decades, the Office of the Prosecutor demonstrated its strong commitment to the unbiased pursuit of international justice and accountability for Rome Statute crimes. The Office of the Prosecutor has pursued accountability for those responsible for genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, mass atrocities, and aggression irrespective of their rank or status. Mrs. Ben Suda remains steadfast to this goal despite the personal threats, challenges, and resource constraints that her office and the court faced. In order to ensure that future generations would not have to experience the mass atrocities that our generation and those before us experience. With strong determination and commitment to make the world a better place, Fatu has unwittingly contributed to the regulation of the global rules-based order by insisting on accountability at both national and international levels. Despite being a court of last resort, the world has begun to learn that with Prosecutor Fatu at the helm, no impunity also means no sacred cows. Today, thanks to the efforts of the Office of the Prosecutor, the long arm of international justice has become ever more visible around the world as the shadow of the court continues to weigh heavily in the calculus of politicians and decision makers within the corridors of power. Madam President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with the growth of the court and steady increase in the volume of cases before it, one cannot but be deeply impressed by the richness and quality of jurisprudence that is reflected in the judgments and decisions of the court. Allow me to highlight a few of the instances or cases that Prosecutor Ben Suda and her office immensely contributed to the development or evolution of the court's 
jurisprudence. And in an era where sexual abuse and gender-based violence have been used as weapons of war to terrorize and victimize vulnerable populations and communities, prosecution led by Mrs. Bensuda have led to the recognition of the crime of sexual slavery and rape against men and women in international criminal law jurisprudence. This has indeed boosted the upholding of international treaties related to these areas that our states have adhered to consciously. It is particularly noteworthy that in light of the highly reported cases of impunity with little to no prosecution for such crime across conflict zones that such groundbreaking jurisprudence have now emerged. Madam President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to also recognize the efforts of the Office of the Prosecutor for its immense contribution to the law relating to the regulation of armed groups, especially by prosecuting crimes committed by such groups against their own members. Prosecutor Ben Suda has ensured that crimes committed by armed groups against members within the group are subjected to international humanitarian law, as demonstrated in the Katanga case. Prosecutor Ben Suda and her office also contributed to the preservation of the history of mankind for future generations through the Almadi case. The successful prosecution of Mr. Almadi for intentional attacks against historic monuments and buildings that are for religious purposes as a war crime sent a clear message to perpetrators of such heinous crimes around the world. This jurisprudence has immensely complemented the efforts of global institutions struggling to protect and preserve historical and world heritage sites. Madam President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in situations of war and conflict, it is the vulnerable section of the population, especially women and children, who often bear the brunt of the atrocities and war crimes. Under Mrs. Bensuda's stewardship, the Office of the Prosecutor consecrated sexual and gender-based crimes and crimes against children. The Office of the Prosecutor also contributed to the addition of forced marriage and forced pregnancy to the list of crimes recognized by the International Criminal Court following the successful prosecution and conviction of Dominic Nguyen. This is another solid example of the groundbreaking jurisprudence that has emerged from the court. Madam President, at this juncture, allow me to address a few remarks to Fatu. Dear Fatu, millions of people, especially women and children, around the world are grateful for your unwavering efforts to uphold justice and accountability. As the voice of the court, even in situations where preliminary investigation and prosecutions have not reached the mere cast of the decisive shadow of the court from the Hague contributed to sheltering them from atrocities. Your unwavering commitment to being the prosecutor for the victims and not lawyers and state parties set the right tone for fulfilling the mission of the ICC. You have selflessly contributed to the promotion and defense of human rights, liberty, and freedom around the globe, even at the detriment of your own personal liberty and freedom, without fear or favor. Throughout your tenure, you remain steadfast to the belief that justice must be served, and potent forces will not deter you from upholding your mandate or defending those who believe in the saying, never again. Never again inspired the establishment of a permanent international criminal judicial mechanism, and never again should the world witness the impunity for atrocious crimes we witnessed before the advent of the International Criminal Court. You took on a difficult job, 
but be assured that you, Prosecutor Ben Suda, have made a humble yet a mighty leap in the youthful history of the court to end impunity. We commend you for the personal qualities of integrity, independence, and dedication that characterize your work at the court. As the representative of your country of birth, the Gambia, we are proud of your achievements. As the quintessential global citizens and for your fearless pursuit of justice wherever duty calls you. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to express our sincere gratitude for the unwavering support rendered to FATU and the Office of the Prosecutor by state parties to the Rome Statute throughout her tenure. It is our hope that as the court is moving forward, the same level of support will be rendered to the incoming prosecutor, Mr. Karim Khan, QC, whom we have no doubt is competent and ready to advance the mission of the court. We must, as an entity, always defend the Rome Statute and ensure that justice and accountability become the hallmarks of our rules-based international order and bring an end to the impunity for Rome Statute crimes in areas within the jurisdictions of the court. Finally, on a final but significant note, allow me to recognize the spouse and gentleman beside Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda, my own senior brother and friend, Mr. Philip Bensouda, and the family for the love and support that they have provided to Fatou during her tenure at the ICC. It is a challenging job that requires the support, sacrifice, understanding of the family. We know well that Mrs. Ben Suda is retiring, but we also know that she is full of youthful energy, and as such, we believe she is not tired. On this positive note, and on behalf of the government and people of the Gambia, we wish Mrs. Ben Suda the best of all in her next endeavors and pray that the Almighty God make her life more serene and rewarding. Bon pa fatu pe Jesu avec toi. Thank you all for your kind attention. Muchísimas gracias.